כן. Okay. So we're, we're going to find the integral of sine cosine, right? We know that the integral of cosine x dx is going to be uh, sine x plus c, no problem. So we know this. We also know that the integral of sine x dx will be negative cosine x plus c, okay? All right. So what happens if I have a question like integral of sine squared and sine cubed? We have to do something in order to find evaluate this integral, right? So we don't like the square, you know, the square is bad, right? But I can easily find the integral of sine, you know, more general, you know, if I, yeah, x multiplied by kx is okay, right? You know, that's going to be sine kx divided by k and plus constant. When you differentiate, you know, k is, the, is gone, right? The, in the denominator. So here, the integral of sine kx dx is going to be negative cosine kx divided by k plus c, right? So that's the easy part. So now sine square x is not sine 2x. If it's sine 2x, I can you apply the above formula. So we we do need uh, uh, some basic formulas from uh, trigonometric geometry. How can I convert sine square x to sine function or cosine without square, okay? We have to recall the formula cosine two x equals cosine square x minus sine square x. Now it depends on which one you want. Now you want the cosine square x will be two cosine square x minus one. If you want a sine square x will be one minus two sine square. X. Okay. So that means, uh, yeah, you have to memorize those formulas, okay? Another formula will be sine 2x will be 2 sine x, but we're not going to use it right now. Okay. All right, so, so those are the two formulas will be used very often. So let's look at it. Uh, I want to sine square x. So above formula tells me sine square x is going to be uh, one minus cosine two x divided by two, okay? Right, you move uh, two sine square x to the left and move cosine two x to the right, and you get this. So let's evaluate sine square x, okay? It's going to be integral one half minus one half cosine two x and dx, okay? So now, one half is just constant, so it gets x, okay? You take constant out, arc cosine two x is gonna be sine two x divided by two, as we just showed about, right? So this will be the answer, okay? So similarly, you can get the integral of a cosine square x. <laughs> yeah, just using, it's just sine and cosine, right? We have a many type of uh, integrals. So let me just focus on sine, sine, sine x. Sine x, then you increase the power sine cube x, how about this? Right? Now what, right? <laughs> if it's sine three x, I know how to evaluate the integral, but sine cube x, we have to do something. We can, yeah, we have to get rid of the cubic in order to evaluate the integral. 
so do something, right? Sine square x, sine x. This is the only trick here. All okay. right, <laughs> we are almost there. We can solve this problem using uh, uh, substitution, okay? And uh, you don't need the integration by part. Maybe you can, right? So sine square x is one minus cosine square x. Okay, this is another trick. So if you use, if you let u to be uh, sine x, uh, cosine x, okay? What do you get? You will get du equals negative sine x dx. So that is, uh, that is a du part, okay? So the integral becomes one minus u square, and that's negative du, okay? <coughs> so we use a substitution for this particular problem. So you get u square minus one du, the entire derivative is one third cubed minus u. Okay, plus constant. So you have to replace u by cosine x. So is there any other method you can do the problem? Uh, it's possible. Okay. But that's more complicated. You can you can do that step by step. For example, you can try use the integration by parts. Okay. You can do integration by parts, then when you differentiate you 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 get yeah the derivative of this. Let, let's try this, you know. Maybe but you still have to separate, right? Sine, sine square x, sine x. If you, if you did not realize that you can use a substitution, then something will try integration by parts, right? So that's a dv, that's a u, right? Try this, you know, why not, right? You, maybe you can solve the problem. All right, so v is gonna be negative cosine x, we know that. All right, so dv equals sine x dx. All right, so the entire derivative uh, is going to be uv minus vu, okay, du. Let's try this. Uh, that's going to be negative sine square x, cosine x. Negative becomes positive here because negative v is going to be positive cosine x, du. du is going to be the derivative of sine square x will be two sine x and the cosine x, okay? Yeah, so it's cool. So you get sine square x cosine x plus twice cosine square x sine x. Then you should realize I can you, know, you can use substitution, right? Right? Because cosine square x sine x. Okay, this you should use a substitution. Okay. Otherwise, uh, <coughs> yeah, you if you don't use a substitution, you change your cosine cosine square x to one minus sine square x. Because sine square x, cosine square x, they are they are they're almost the same. They just differ by you know and one minus sine negative sign. But if you use a substitution, you still use the same substitution here. It's gonna be cosine x. Yeah. Cosine x. So du equals negative sine x dx. And plus two 
and u square and a negative du okay and so there are many ways to get the answer some are more complicated okay sometimes you try new try an idea but does not work you stop there okay you have to go back to the origin function here's the the antiderivative is negative two thirds u cubed plus constant yeah, you get slightly different expression. Okay, but this should be the same answer as before. Okay, although they look different, but I can tell there's no bigger difference. Okay, okay. so you compare with the above answer. It's pretty different, right? But that only differ by constant. So don't worry about it, okay? Why I can, how can I change that? Now I can tell you, oops, this is a, uh, yeah, okay? So sine square x, you know that, sine square x is going to be, uh, is going to be uh, one minus, Cosine square x, okay? Okay, so I, I change it to, right? All right, so now you simplify. You get this, and the plus cosine cube x minus two q, Cosine cube x plus c. So one minus two thirds is just one third. So you get the same answer. If you compare with the one we got. So this is about integral of sine cube. All right, <clears throat> let me ask you, are you able to evaluate this one? Integral sine two, I just increase the power, right? One by one, but every time you have to try different new methods, different methods. Okay, so mathematics, it had to tell which will be used somewhere, okay, directly. But we, we don't know. But you, you should have viewed it like a training your brain cells, okay, to think. You know, there are so multiple ways to solve one particular problem. So someday you deal with some other problems because you, you know how to solve those harder problems. So you can figure out some best solution to, to the problems in engineering, some other, okay? Okay, right, so integral sine to the fourth power. You have to find a way to reduce the power in order to evaluate integral. Okay, maybe to some point you can use substitution like what we did for the last problem. But we know this formula, right? Okay. I think we should, we also know this formula. Okay. <laughs> Those are two formulas coming from the above. Probably use that. But here is sine to the fourth power. But that's okay. We can square it and square it, right? That's a tricky. Okay, so it's going to be
Okay, then you square it. Right, so when you square it, you get four, one minus two, cosine two x plus cosine squared two x dx. You see, we will reduce the power from four to two. So you are happy with the cosine two x. We know how easily find the antiderivative. We still have to deal with cosine squared two x. Then you apply the formula here, right? You can reduce that. So let's 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 forget the one quarter, one half cosine two x plus one quarter of cosine squared two x. I'm going to repress that by one minus cosine two to four x. We can also uh, group them together. One quarter plus one eighth is going to be three over eight minus one half cosine two x plus one eighth cosine four uh, four x dx. Okay. So every term here we can find the entire derivative easily. The first one is going to x. The second one, I think I have to divide by, divide by two sine two x. The third one, I divide by four sine four x. N plus constant, we're done. So this is the antiderivative. I sine two to the fifth. Sine to the fourth power, okay? Uh, I'm going to ask you to <laughs> evaluate this, and then we stop that, the fifth, so, okay? <laughs> so any of those problems, you know, yes, sign to the fifth. So you try, okay? I'll give you one minute. Find the way to solve it. So this is a time to review the trigonometric geometry, math 154. So those are the formulas probably you, you already learned that in high school. <coughs> That's called the algebra two, I guess. All right, let me try. Uh, it's similar to the one we did it for sine cube, right? But how can I convert, if I use a substitution, right? So uh, this u equals uh, sine, if u equals cosine x, then du equals negative sine x dx. Oops. Okay, so this will be negative du. Now, sine to the fourth power can be converted to 
some function depends on you. Okay. <laughs> this can be written as sine square in a square. Okay. So the sine square is going to be one minus cosine square. So it's one minus u square and square negative u. Right? But this is a polynomial. How do you evaluate this integral? Right? It's going to be one minus two u square u to the fourth power negative u. So just integral polynomial. Okay. So you can you get a negative sign, you can put a negative sign outside, it's fine. So antiderivative and plus constant. Okay, then you replace u by cosine. It's cosine x minus two thirds cosine cube x plus one fifth cosine fifth x and the plus constant. So that's it. Similarly, you can do, uh, you can work out cosine, okay? So by, uh, yeah, so exercise when you have a time and trying to uh, evaluate the integral of a cosine square x dx, okay? And the cosine cube x dx, cosine force x dx, and the cosine Okay, you can try that if you have time. Trying to evaluate. So I'm not going to work on that. All right, so now the next one is a mixture. It contains sine x, cosine x. So the first one is going to be sine x, cosine x dx. Okay, but that way is you can use a substitution. Simple, right? So use a substitution, you let u to be sine x dx, sine x. So du equals cosine x dx, right? So the integral becomes uh, this part is du. So just u and du. And that's going to be half of u squared plus constant. <clears throat> then some students say, well, wait a minute, you know, there's another way maybe. Okay. Why? Because sine x, cosine x is so special. It's going to be half of sine two x dx, right? Because sine two x is going to be two sine x cosine x. Yeah, this is a time to review the trigonometric geometry and all those formulas. So the antiderivative sine two x will be negative cosine two x divided by two, right? And plus constant. So the answer will be negative quarter cosine two x plus constant. So you say, wait a minute, those two are different? They're essentially the same. They only differ by constant, right? They only differ by constant. Why? I show you how to, right? So it's a quarter. But the cosine two x is one minus two sine square x, right? Okay, cosine two x. So after you multiply this out, it'll be one half of sine square x minus a quarter plus c. But that's quarter plus c, it can be denoted by another constant. This is another constant, okay? <coughs> so you can denote by c prime. So it's going to be half of sine square x plus plus c prime.
Okay, so you get the same result. So if when I grade the test, of course, I got different num different forms of answers. Yeah. So I, if I read if I read through your solutions, I can tell you know whether it's correct answer or not. Although I I, I do not have all the possible answers for the same problem. Okay. So it's important to learn how to express your ideas clearly step by step. As I said that many students training did not, was not training that way in high school, middle school, then when they're attending the home, they usually don't collect the over homework, I guess. They only focus on the answers. <laughs> yeah, even the SAT test is multiple choice just by guessing sometimes. Right. The only reason is because there was no main power to grade the test. Okay, so let the machine to do that. That's that's the reason we have to choose mul multiple uh, option problem. And in chemistry, in the physics, I think that you you more likely take a multiple choice test. Right? But in mathematics, it's the best test is not just not multiple choice problems. We we have to see the solution step by step. Right. <laughs> so the next one is you increase the power on one side, right? Okay, then what is the next step? Right, we did this similar problems already, but this problem essentially is a is a is a cosine cube x, uh, sine cube x, why? Because this is going to be sine x, one minus, one minus sine square x. Oops. One minus sine square x dx. Okay, so it's gonna be integral sine x minus sine cube x plus, right? So it's the same as if you know uh, if you know the integral of sine cube x, you are able to solve the problem, right? But here we're going to use a substitution. Okay. Where are you going to substitution? We let u to be cosine x du equals negative sine x dx. So the integral of sine x cosine square x dx that can be simplified. Cosine x just use square and uh, sine x dx is negative. So we did this before at the very beginning of the class. Okay, so it's going to be negative one third u cubed plus c and then the answer will be this. So you can also increase the power of sine x, like sine square x, cosine x, it's the same idea. Okay, we continue to consider the mixture. Sine x square, cosine x square plus dx. Can you do this? Please, I'm trying to find a way that you square each term. <coughs> All right, so the best way to solve the problem is going to be because this is square square, the power is four, right? So if you can express sine x cosine x square. Right, then you probably can reduce the power. 
okay? It's going to be half of sine 2x squared dx, okay? So now you get a quart of sine squared tx dx. Now you, that's a square there still, but it's good in that it's already, you reduce the power actually, sine squared cosine squared total gave you degree four. Now you get two. Then you have, you have the formula, one minus cosine double two x, so it's four x. Then the rest of the part is easy. You take the two out, that's one over eight. Then the integral of one minus cosine to x is just x minus sine four x over four. Okay, so this is a big answer. Uh, I don't know there are any other better way to solve the problem. Of course, there are integrals uh, about tangent x, cotangent x. But I try not to put them on the exam, so it's too much work. But let's, let's, let's do some of them. Let's like integral of tangent x. Integral of tangent x. Integral of tangent x. Uh, this is going to be how to do that, right? Well, you can convert it to sine x cosine. So sine x cosine x dx. Then that's a quotient, right? It's still product of sine x cosine x, but it's a one in denominator. So the natural substitution will be cosine x. You let u to be cosine x. Okay, so du equals negative sine x dx. So the above integral now becomes it's going to be integral to u, it's a negative du. Okay, how do you value this integral? Well, this is just a natural log, right? It's going to be negative natural log of a survey u plus constant. So it'll be negative natural log of cosine x plus constant. There are more strange uh, functions like the integral of secant x, and uh, it's harder to evaluate the integral. Yeah, you have to choose a very special substitution to do that. But anyway, I'm not going to spend too much time on this type of functions. I do want to record the formula uh, cosine alpha plus beta is going to be cosine. I hope it's still removed. That's called cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus sine alpha, sine beta. Okay. <clears throat> now, why minus? If you let the beta to be alpha, then this implies cosine two alpha. Cosine square alpha minus sine square alpha. So match was the formula. Okay. okay. But if we change the sign, cosine alpha minus beta, I will get cosine alpha, still get a cosine beta. 
because this time again, my plus sign alpha sine beta. That's the equation one, equation two. Okay, I want to get formula for cosine alpha, cosine beta. Okay, the, if we add the two equations together, what do you get? You will get cosine alpha plus beta plus cosine alpha minus beta. You get twice of cosine, uh, cosine alpha, cosine beta. Okay, if you do the subtraction, equation two minus equation one. I get twice of a sine alpha, sine beta. Yeah, this is a good formula. This is a, this is a formula we need it sometimes. Okay, because the product of two terms can be decomposed into the sum of two terms. Okay, now how about sine alpha plus beta? Sine alpha is sine alpha, cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. So that's the equation three. I can change the sine for beta. That's the equation four. Okay, so we can get sine alpha if we yeah if we add these two equations together. What do you get? You will get sine alpha plus beta, sine alpha minus beta is going to be two sine alpha cosine beta. Okay. So this is the third formula we need. This is three formulas. Yeah. Sine alpha cosine beta, sine alpha sine beta, cosine alpha cosine beta. So if I ask you to evaluate the integral uh, sine two x cosine y or uh, cosine x. How do I do that? Any other figured out two possible ways to solve this problem? So you can uh, use above formula. Let's look at what is sign. The formula going to use just right above, right? So it's going to be one half uh, alpha is two x, beta is x. So sine two x plus x is three x, plus sine two x minus x just x. All right, so that's what they get. Then you find the entire derivative of sine three x to be cosine three x negative divided by three, and here's cosine x over one. Yeah, just cosine x and plus constant. So this is answer. Yeah, you you are you are applying the form into here. But there are multiple ways to solve the problem. 
I can try a different way because when I see sine two x cosine x, I know I can separate sine two x, two sine x cosine x and cosine x. So you get cosine squared. So we already solved this problem before, right? It's going to be twice of So it's natural to let u to be, uh, let u to be cosine x. So du equals negative sine x dx. Right. So this integral becomes uh, this is u square, and that will be negative du. So the antiderivative is negative two, negative two over three. So, yeah, so this is the answer. But compare those two answers. It's not clear. Right? It's not clear whether they're equal. <laughs> yeah. Are they equal or differ by constant? If look at this too. Yes, yeah, suppose you know I get a quiz back and I find out <laughs> the different answers, right? <laughs> so you have to show the details, you know, the grade maybe only knows that one of the methods. If you don't show the details, you will cannot figure out how to get this, right? So you then maybe mark it on. Because that's still your responsibility to argue points back when you get a quiz back take the points off you give me a good reason why you deserve more points then i will give you points back now if the grade mark it wrong and you still couldn't figure it out why mark it wrong that means you're not good about this problem so you don't deserve get points back okay <laughs> yeah don't always trust the grade okay Sometimes could happen in a mistake, like a, like a problems here. There are two different, many two different answers will show up on the, on the, on the quizzes. Okay, he's just like you, you know. He he got A or A plus in Jacob's class, and he applied for the grading position. So okay, so so let's look at this uh, as a previous answer, right? And I'm trying to see if they are if they're match. I think it's half, yeah. All right? Plus constant. I'm going to modify because the only difference here is I don't want the 3x there, right? I will change that. How can I change the 3x to a different <coughs> to cosine? <laughs> so I'm going to cosine 3x will be cosine x plus 3x, uh, 2x. So I have to I have to uh, use the above formula because then this will be cosine x and cosine 2x minus sine x sine 2x. All right? You have to continue. Here's cosine x. What is cosine 2x? I like a cosine x, so there should be should be uh, two 
cosine square x minus one, right? Okay, minus sine x, but this one should be two sine square x cosine x, because this will be two sine x cosine x, okay? And minus uh, plus half of cosine x. Let's do step by step. We probably get the same result. And here's two cosine cube x, or get cube x, minus cosine x, and minus two. I, I don't like a cosine square x, uh, sine square x, so it's one minus cosine square x. So everything becomes cosine now. So let's continue. If you multiply this out, this will be negative two cosine x plus two cosine cube x. So I have a two, two, I have a four cosine cube x. Then I have a negative three cosine x plus one half cosine x plus c. I hope I can get the right answer. I'm not sure. So how come I get negative four three cosine cube x? And then I get plus two plus one half cosine x plus c. It does not match. <laughs> All right, so how do, uh, what I should get, right? We should get negative two of three cosine cube x, nothing else. So something wrong with our computation. Okay. Uh, let's go back to see where the mistakes, it's possible. Okay, let's go back to our solution first. So sine two x cosine x, okay? By the above formula, will be sine sum of this two x and subtraction. So it's going to be x. So you get an anti-derivative each of them. Uh, I think the anti-derivative that should be negative sign here, okay? because the anti-derivative of negative cosine x gives sine x. That's a small difference, and that's okay. Yeah, but we do not use that very often, right? But then, so then, then we have another way to solve the problem. And sine two x cosine x will be two cosine x sum u, and you let u to be cosine x, it'll be negative, right? So you got negative one third. Yeah, this is answer. So here's a negative sign, but that's okay, negative sign. Oh, where's my, yeah, I think I copied around here. So on the top, this is a negative six. Yeah, I copied around, negative six. And this is a negative sign, okay? Then um, I get the right answer, okay? So there was something. Yeah, negative one over six minus. Negative one over six, one over six. All right, so now you get two over three cosine cube x and uh, have a positive one half cos x, and so cosine x is dot, so get the same answer. See, I, I, I made mistakes when I copied the first answer. I made mistakes and also 
Yeah, this, that was sign mistake there. So now it's correct, as you see there. They should have, they should match. So sign, uh, Let's look at uh, evaluate the C integral and the sign mx. And the sign nx dx, okay? So you have to, this is a sign sign. So let's go back which formula we can use, okay? We go back to the formula sign sign i think it'll be cosine okay so here's a formula how do you get sine sine right sine alpha sine beta then there'll be difference of a cosine alpha minus beta and minus cosine alpha plus beta okay so minus is the first so sine mx sine n uh, x Is going to be half one half of cosine m minus n x minus cosine n plus n x. Okay. Yeah, there's a subtraction. All right. So. So there's a problem here. We have to assume n m is not going to be, uh, they're not going to be the same, okay? So we assume that m minus n is not going to be zero. So the M N could be possibly right. We have to assume, yeah. Uh, well, we we assume that M N are positive numbers. Otherwise, you have to have more acid. Uh, yeah, M N are positive integers. Okay, positive integers. So an M plus N is positive. Okay. So if uh, if m is not equal to n, this integral is going to be one half, and the sine m minus n x divided by m minus x, okay, and the minus sine m plus n x divided by m plus n. So you evaluate at the two end point. But that is going to be zero, okay? Because sine k f pi is always zero, so that's going to be zero. Okay, only when n minus n equals zero, okay, then you uh, then you then you can uh, can yeah you can get a non-zero number. Okay, so that's it. So we get yeah we can solve this uh, integral very generally. Okay, let's do problem, next problem, uh, 42, okay? Evaluate integral of sine two theta and sine six theta d theta, okay. This is indefinite integral. So look at the above formula, right? So it's going to be the integral when half and the cosine two theta minus six theta. So negative four theta minus cosine two theta plus six theta. It'd be eight theta d theta. 
Okay. Then uh, the rest of them is trivial because the entire derivative cosine with sine. Yeah, why I change the sign? Because cosine four theta is going to be cosine four theta because this is an even function. Okay. And uh, here, it will be sine eight theta divided by eight, then plus constant. Okay, how about Yeah, uh, I have to talk about this. Yeah, we discussed this tan x already. So it's about secant x. The secant x is pretty strange, right? This is going to be the integral of cosine x dx. Okay. So what is the natural way to solve the problem? So the natural way to solve the problem is maybe in the book, you know, that gave you some formula. So, so nature to the problem is you have to there are lots of trick here. You multiply the numerator denominator by cosine x. Okay, so this is very similar, you know, then you use a substitution let u to be instead of cosine x sine x, because d sine x gives you cosine x dx. Okay. Right. So d u equals cosine x dx. All right, so let's get cosine x takes du. And how about cosine x? Cosine square x is one minus sine square x. So one minus u square. It's not too bad, okay? Then there is a formula already there to get the, uh, uh, evaluate this integral, okay? So evaluate this integral uh, otherwise, just you know, you can try and do it by yourself. Yeah, there was. I'm trying to find the formula for you. Yes. Okay. So the derivative of inverse of a hyperbolic function. Okay. This is going to be uh, the hyperbolic tangent x plus constant okay it's on page four uh four eight eight so that means all right that means it's going to be Sine x plus c does not look good because we don't like arctangent, hyperbolic arctangent. That hyperbolic arctangent is there is a given formula there, right? Oh, I don't know what's going on.
it's going to be net log of 1 plus x 1 over 1 over x. And that is for x between 1 and negative, okay? So this is a not, this is going to be net log 1 plus psi x, 1 minus psi x plus constant. Okay. There are many forms for the same answer. You see that, right? Now you get, yeah, the integral of secant x can be written as the inverse of a hyperbolic tangent and then combined with sine x. Because hyperbolic, inverse hyperbolic tangent x can be written in that form, right? Is this is a, but this still does not match the one given in the book, okay? <laughs> What I'm going to do, I'm going to continue modify it. <laughs> so then I just try to show you, you know, because sine, cosine all related. That's the reason, you know, the same function can be expressed in many different forms. Okay, so here's the standard trick. Uh, I multiply the denominate by its conjugate. <coughs> I can multiply it by one plus sine x. Then here's one plus sine x square about like this. Okay? The plus constant. Right? It does not essentially change the problem. I right, then this will be one minus sine square x so is cosine square x. Okay, looks great. So this will be uh, this will be uh, cosine x one plus sine x and the square, right? And just keep it going. Then they take two out, so cancel it out. But don't forget to put the absolute value because cosine x could be negative. Okay, that's another version of the answer. Then you keep it going. You can also express as one over cosine x plus sine x cosine x plus constant. See? Okay, then you can express as secant x plus tangent x plus c. So there are many versions of the funds answers, many forms of answers for the integral of secant x. Yeah, there are at least let me list off, okay? Look at all different versions. Okay, this is the first version, right? And that's the second version, right? And uh, so you multiply this, then that will be the third version, right? And that's the fourth version, essentially. There are two different, there are four different forms of the, for the same function. <laughs> That's a, that's a, a, a pretty, yeah, interesting. So integral of secant x, when you get a secant x, you should be able to answer the question, you know, what is the integral of the secant x? The entire derivative of the, of the secant x will be natural log of absolute value of secant x plus tangent x and plus constant, okay? <coughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, one more problem. Let me finish this. So tangent the cube x and dx. How do I evaluate this? Well, I tried to change the sine cosine, but still, 
looks pretty complicated. You know, this is going to be sine cube x, cosine cube x dx. Okay. So sounds like it's not easy to to do that. So we tried to use uh, the idea uh, for for the sine cube x. So let's try separate. Okay. <clears throat> so this way we don't know. We have no proof, right? So secant x. Uh, then what? I trying to find a substitution. It's going to work. Uh, it's not easy to find a substitution. Okay. Yeah, just like you know, when you when you compare this sine uh, sine 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 square x sine x, right? So you still have to change this to one minus cosine x. So I changed tan x to secant x minus one. Then then it works. Okay. I know the derivative of secant x is going to be uh, the derivative of secant x is going to be uh, Uh, derivative derivative tangent x is going to be secant x times times uh, tangent x. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, I want to write it here. Okay. So anyway, so let's look at I know how to handle the tangent x, but on this side, okay, on this side, <laughs> on this side, you have to uh, you have to let u to be tangent x. Okay, so du equals secant x times tan x. Now secant square x, not secant x. Yeah, this is a dx. Okay, so so the first one here will be uh, just uh, u and the du. Very simple. And this one we already know that absolute value of cosine x went over <coughs> the absolute value of cosine x x plus constant. So this is going to be half of u square and minus. Yeah, it's plus, so it's plus actually. Yeah. Okay, so the, the final answer will be 10, 10 square x plus natural log of cosine x plus constant. Okay, so that's it. Uh, Yeah, if you put it in the denominator minus sign, okay. So, so that's all for today's class. <laughs>